So once again, we are going to proceed with our lesson, and today we are going to deal with the microwave devices, a continuation of the web guides topic. And uh, these are the areas where we are going to be having the, the components that are associated with the microwave frequencies. So the first component of the device we want to deal with is the klystron amplifier. And the klystron amplifier, and this is the diagram that we'll basically be using for klystron amplifier. So when you look at this diagram, on the from the, the left hand side of the diagram is that we are going to have what we refer to as the heater, the heater and the cathode. Basically, when the heat, when the heater hits the cathode, we emit electrons, and the electrons are emitted at different frequency in energy or energy levels. The electrons are focused using the focusing electrodes towards the B plus terminal. But equally, we have got a function as the bunch cavity, where we have the RF input, and uh, the catcher cavity, where we've got the RF output. So the principle is that any time we have these electrons being emitted towards the B plus terminal, with an input, in, with an RF input, the electrons are mod velocity modulated, and the electrons are velocity modulated, they gain energy, the RF energy, the RF energy, the RF frequency. Gains the increases the amplitude and at the end of the day, at the end of the process, when it reaches the B plus terminal, you shall have the RF frequency that is higher as compared to RF input. So another thing I want to see is that between gap A and gap B, there's part to part force are drift space. Drift space is where the bunched electrons move. So to our, when they get to gap B then these bunch of electrons are actually disassociated and we have, we collect our RF output from the gap B, from the catcher cavity towards the output. So basically this is what we need to know concerning that. So one of the things that we are able to, under, we need you to understand is that anytime you want to use this as an, uh, an oscillator, then you have to get a positive feedback in an oscillator, in a oscillation circuit. Because of that, then the terminal B, we shall take the output of terminal B and feed it back to the focusing electrons so that we are able to have the continuation of or the gain of the, the amplifier being positive for us to have more oscillations to go. But because of the purpose of just using this as an amplifier, then we do not terminate the B terminal back to the focusing electrodes or our anodes electrodes. So because of that, then we are able to use this as an amplifier. So basically, being used as an amplifier, we, ju we just aim at comparing the RF output and the RF input. And remember, at the drift space is where there's velocity modulation. And there's also bunching or casing. The bunching, the, the process of bunching is where the electrons are able to combine together. Because they, when, the first, when the first electrons are released, they move at a, at a much lower speed because of the resistance of the, of the path. But once the, the condition is, the condition is is admissible or is, is, is favorable, then the, second, the other bunches of electrons are able to catch up with the first bunch of elect first electrons. So they are able to bunch together. So they bunch and they move at an average velocity. That's why we are, we are talking of the bunched electrons at this point. So basically this is what we need to know concerning the klystron amplifier. And other than that, we shall be able to also see where we can get this kind of application. And in the eventually that we want to use the, whatever we to as applicate diagram, how do we relate it with the klystron amplifier? So the, the operation. So the operation, when we're talking about the operation, we need to explain how the electrons are able to move from the cathode to the B plus terminal, and also another thing on how the bunching occurs. And at the point of bunching, what basically takes place? That's what we need to know concerning that. So we are talking of the, the electrons, like the electrons are emitted. by the heated cathode and forecast. Focus towards the B plus terminal. Then 
the RF input signal is coupled to the system through the bunch of cavity. and is modulated and is modulated by the electrons at in the drift space and the elect by the electrons the drift space Bunching occurs bunching occurs in the drift space bunching occurs in the drift space and this is mainly due to this is mainly due to Due to, due to the resistance offered to the, to the movement of the electrons, the resistance offered by this drift space eh? that allows the electrons released The electrons released later to catch up with the electrons that were initially released to B plus terminal. When well, bunching occurs, the electrons moves at average velocity. towards the B plus terminal. At the catcher cavity, the RF output is obtained having much having much higher power than the RF input signal. The electrons are then collected, the electrons are then collected and then collected by the B plus terminal. For clitron amplifier, to be used as an oscillator, Then 
the B plus terminal. is connected back to the focusing electrodes. So this is an applicate diagram, and this applicate diagram is related with the crystal outside of Dana. So this one basically explains how the bunch of cars relative to the RF signal. At which point of the RF signal does the bunch of cars? So what happens is that uh, what we are talking of the electrons uh, having some resistance in movement from the uh, cathode to the B plus terminal. It occurs because at that point in time, the RF signal is, has no negative voltage with respect to the, the energy in the electrons. So what happens, it, it pulls, it drags the movement of the electrons and therefore we make sure, we, we, it, make, it enables the bunching to occur. So when the, that, Electro, the electrons are removed. At this point, there's negative potential with respect to the cathode. So there's a bit of the resistance. There's a bit of the resistance of movement. So, but towards when, we, when the sign and wave now starts to increase from the negative towards a positive signal, then we shall be having whatever we as the energy addition in the, in, in the electrons. So then the bunching occurs. So at this point, these are the initial electrons released at the cathode. But subsequent electrons follow up, comes and meets and, and, and joins the, the, the initial electrons, so the electrons list at the first instant. And so bunching is able to occur. So bunching is able to occur between when, when you have the, the positive going signal. But because you are still at the negative voltage at this point here, it's not, bunching is not very extreme. But once you get the positive terminal, the bunching then occurs, and we have several bunches that we have of electrons. So this basically is able to relate to us that how does bunching occur? Bunching occurs towards the positive going of the sine wave. But at the negative, there's a retardation of movement of electrons from the, from the cathode to the, towards the B+. Plus. That retardation allows the bunching to occur because other electrons will get a more favorable environment than the first bunch of electrons and therefore they will catch up the first bunch of electrons. So this basically is correlated with this one. So at this point here, we're talking about the RF signal being more negative. Is at this point that we have the, between the, the cathode and the gap A. So the cathode and gap A, the electrons are still moving, but they're moving at a retarded speed. And that's one, the negative part of the sine RF input signal. But once one, we, we started rising towards the positive side, that it allows the bunching to occur. Because the RF signal is going to be positive, and the, the energy that the RF signal add, has and the energy of the, the possessed by the electrons are going to combine and the modulation will take place. That modulation also allows us to have whatever fraction of the bunching. And those at this point of time we are able to get whatever fraction to us bunched electrons. So the, when you look at that, the RF signal is able to grow towards gap, towards gap B. It's able to grow towards gap B. So when we're talking about the reference electrons, reference electrons refers to the electrons that were initially removed. And that's why Reference electrons will de delay in movement from the, from, the from the cathode to the B plus. So until we have got a positive sign, positive sign, positive part of the sine wave of the RF signal, then bunching won't occur. But uh, towards the positive sign, the bunching now starts. But bunching is maximum on the positive sign, on the positive sign of the RF signal. That's what bunching occurs maximally. So basically, sometimes we'll be asked to explain. The, the application, how, how, how bunching occurs or how crystal applicate diagram can be used to explain the function of the crystal amplifier. Now this applicate diagram basically explains what takes place in the actual bunching. So we're going to take a few key points about that so we're able to do that.
So when the RF signal is at the origin, it has a negative voltage which retards the movement of electrons emitted. from the cathode towards the B plus terminal. During the positive going part of the RF signal, Bunching starts. Bunching starts and grow becomes bunching starts and grows to maximum when the RF signal acquires requires or reaches a positive voltage. Therefore, the reference signal the reference signal is catched up the reference signal is <coughs> the reference signal bunches therefore the reference signal bunches with the up down Later released electrons. During the positive part of the RF signal. Velocity modulation takes place between the RF signal and the electrons And this results to bunching with the output of the RF signal. Having greater energy levels. So let us deal with also applications of Clestron amplifier. So we shall be, we are supposed to know several applications of Clestron amplifier. So number one is signal source. 
signal source in microwave generators. Number two is frequency modulated oscillators. Frequency modulated oscillators. Oscillators in portable. In portable microwave links. In portable microwave links. But three is pump oscillators in parametric amplifiers. There are several. Number four is stellar oscillators in radar circuits. Stellar oscillators. We can at least have the fifth one is sub millimeter, sub, sub, um, sub millimeter, sub meter and a millimeter in what I refer to as power trigger circuits. So we're going to deal, these are some of the application of the crystal amplifier that we need to put in place and also show us that's where we can meet the, this kind of application. So we're going to, to deal with the second device, which I'm referring to as traveling wave tube. So this is our scanned device that we use in microwave, device, microwave systems. So this is a TWT, traveling wave tube. TWT. TWT, traveling wave tube. And one of the things that happens with it is that uh, it, just, it appears to be almost similar in terms of construction, but the operation is different, given that in this case, we are going to form what we refer to as helix. So when you leave the electrons, the cathode release electrons and are focused towards the B plus. But they encounter weak actual field. This weak actual field is in terms of the circular nature. And it's because of that weak actual field that we get the RF input takes a similar shape towards the output. So when you count the weak actual field, the voice lead modulation takes place and bunching occurs. So whatever we know, commonly compare, we call the RF output and the RF input in terms of comparison. And realize that the RF in output has got a much larger amplitude than the RF input. Then by that case, we shall say that we have achieved the amplification that we require or the modification that we want. So operation. The electrons leaving the cathode encounter weak actual fields and bunching occurs. 
bunching occurs. Velocity modulation takes place takes place takes place between the RF input terminal and RF output terminal. So no power goes into velocity, velocity modulation, no power goes into velocity modulation as there is as there is equal number as there is equal number of equal number of electrons and equal number of accelerated electrons accelerated electrons and retarded electrons. So the first bunch of electrons, this is the first sorry, sorry. The first bunch of electrons, the first bunch of electrons reaches the next turn of helix, reaches next turn of helix. You can see helix from there for this point here. And it encounters a retarding force. And it encounters a retarding force. Which enables the next bunch of electrons which enables the next bunch of electrons to catch up with the first bunch. So what else? The interaction takes place takes place and the energy of the RF output wave is found to be greater, is found to be greater than the energy But then the energy possessed by the RF input, by the energy possessed by the RF input wave. So this energy results what I thought as charge density curve, which I'm going to sketch here. Charge density curve. Have or graph. When you sketch that,
So this is what I'm, this is what I'm referring to as the the signal, the modulation that takes place. But when we insert the RF signal, then we shall have a little change in the in the in the direction that we have here, so that we have our RF signal growing up in a magnitude. So this is the RF output signal. This is this is the charge density. And will let it take place. So this explains clearly when you compare the RF input and the RF output, there's a difference when you get to the B plus terminal. This is what explains the charge density of the the tendency that is realized in an in a TWT when you're using the the TWT as an amplifier. Then we talking about we then talk about the applications of TWT. The number one is microwave tubes. And number two, we're talking about broadcast, broadcasting stations or systems. We're going to go to the third device, which is I'm referred to as, is as a magnetron. So we want also to draw and explain a bit of it. So this is a um, magnetron, and this basically explains to us how the magnetron works, even in our microwave devices. So at the center of it is the cathode that emits electrons. But with, between the cathode and the anodes, eh, there is a, a space that is, is in fact, it is the interaction space for the electrons to act with its RF field. And uh, for us to, give, uh, to, get, to get an output, then the electrons emitted must land at the anode for it to be coupled so that we can get it as an output of the energy that we want. And that's basically what takes place here. So when the, when the cathode is heated, it emits electrons, and because it's in radial nature, it's, it moves. Eh? And the, because of it moves, the, the, there are two types of fields that determine the movement of electrons, the DC field and the RF field. The DC field is basically due to heating, and the RF field is due to the movement of the electrons. When these two inter fields interrupt, they are able to influence the movement of the electrons radially, and some force shall be added to it. Because electrons having be, being in position of the current and in a subject to magnetic field, you have some, some force develop on the electrons that makes it move from one point to another, or makes it interact in the RF field. Whatever you need to take note is that in the absence of oscillations, no magnetic field is, is, is in the absence of the no magnetic field is applied. And as a result, that then there's no modulation. So we need to take note of the following, that uh, for us to have the output, the electrons emitted by the cathode must land at the anode for it to be coupled. And so we are able to have this as a basic operation. The electrons emitted by the cathode experience two different fields. The 
that influence its movement. These fields are the DC magnetic field and the RF field. So let us look at when this electron starts with this field, what comes out of it? When electron moves, it 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 possesses it possesses some current, eh? and when this interacts. with the magnetic field, the electron experiences some force. Experiences some force causing it to interact or move. Experiences some force causing it to move within the interaction space. As magnetic field is constant, As magnetic field is constant. As magnetic field is constant, whatever you need to know that the field here is constant. As magnetic field is constant, then whatever the force on the electron depends on the velocity. The force on the electron depends. on its radial velocity. So finally, let us understand that in the absence of oscillation, no magnetic field is applied. In the absence of oscillations, no magnetic field is applied and so the electrons move due to their natural due to their natural due to their natural influence by the surrounding so this is basically what we need to concern to know that concerning the magnetron and this operation so one of the things is that for us to couple the output, then the anode, the electrons must land at the anode. For effective output, then the electron must be collected. by the anode cavity 
which then allows coupling to the output device. So our our next discussion we shall be dealing with is the gun diode, which is a part of the microwave devices. We shall continue from the gun, gun, gun diode oscillators that we shall be able to discuss. And other than that, gun oscillators, we will also be able to discuss what I refer to as, as the circulators and isolators towards, towards as we approach the end of this topic. We shall we look at all those things three.